How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now, gaming headsets, they've kind of gotten a bit boring. Now, I know we have been getting like wireless headsets and they're becoming more affordable like the HS-70s over here. They're really nice, really affordable, but that's kind of where it ends. Uh, we haven't really gotten anything else that makes gaming headsets more fun. But that's possibly where it's going to change now because we are seeing some headset getting haptic feedback like the HS60 haptics right here. So that's kind of where you actually have uh, moving drivers inside the ear cups that makes it vibrate or gives you a more real world experience where you kind of feel the base so for explosions and so on. It just feels more realistic. And it's not entirely new. We've actually seen it um, on the uh, Red Dragon Siren 2s a while back, but that was kind of a bit horrible, it didn't work properly. And we did also see it on the Razer Nori Ultimates, but uh, it's been quite expensive, these. So this is Corsair's our first attempt at haptics as well. And I have to say they did a really good job with these ones, uh, although, Pricing is a bit of an issue because these ones are retailing for around $130 uh, or 1,900 Rand. Now, when you compare that to the HS60 Pros, which is kind of the exact same on paper with uh, these, it's almost two times the price. And if you currently look at the price on Amazon for the HS60 Pros, they're almost three times less expensive than these, which uh, they're exactly the same, so but they're so much more expensive. The HS60 Pros is going for around $70 or $50, depending on where you can get it, or around 1,250 Rand. So is it going to be actually worth buying for two to three times the price? So we're going to check it out. But just quickly, if you guys want to get the HS60 haptics for yourself, definitely go check out the dreamwaretech.co.za where you can get a ton of other Corsair products as well. Forget about the subpar customer service, Dreamware Tech delivers nationwide, keeps you updated on every step of the way. And again, something very special is that everything comes inside eco-friendly packaging, which is awesome nowadays. So go check out dreamwaretech.co.za and get your new shiny HS60 haptics today. Uh, Anu? What? I, I think it's still in the box, you're not holding anything. It's right here. It's just camo. Oh, camera, okay. Ooh. Now, I currently don't own the HS60 Pros, but I do own the HS70 Pros, and both quality-wise and specs-wise, they're exactly the same, except this one is wireless, so that's pretty much it. So let's quickly go over the differences between uh, these uh, two, HS60 Pro again, <laughs> and to show you guys if it's actually big a difference between them. So specs wise, they're pretty much exactly the same, like 95%. The HS60 Haptics um, has the nice uh, camel look, which is unique to this one. And I actually do quite like it. It makes it a bit more unique instead of the normal carbon or the, the black. You also get a blue and I believe maybe a green, or I think they removed the green and you have the uh, special edition or something, which is a bit more cream. So that is one of the biggest ish, the biggest differences and then the other difference between the two is that the HS60 Pros comes with a small little USB 7.1 adapter, whereas the HS60 Haptics does a not. You don't get that adapter to make it 7.1, although you can still use it with uh, the uh, Windows Sonic software. So that'll mimic the exact same thing. Uh, we see it more and more where it's just virtual 7.1 anyway. So you can do it with software as a well. Uh, so you'll pretty much get the exact same experience. Uh, so you don't get that adapter. It's just nice the HS60s did have the USB. So if you want to use it on, on PlayStation or so on, on some of your other devices, then that adapter actually came in quite handy. But just quickly before we get into the rest of the video, if you guys are enjoying the content, oh, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I would really much appreciate that and just helps us make more content. And I know that you guys are enjoying the content. So anyway, let's quickly go over the build quality and design of the headset. Now, if you already know everything about the HS60 design, uh, you can just skip forward. But for the people who are new, the HS60s are a more simplistic design that's actually built 
really a well you get a pretty much a full aluminum headband that goes all the way through it can adjust a, a bit outwards for a bit a larger head sizes and it does have a fair amount of flex now i can't go too far but it's a, a decent amount at the top you do have some foam padding which is pretty soft uh, it's going to give you a nice comfort for that long gaming sessions now the ear cups are also able to swivel a small amount nothing too crazy but it is also a potential breaking point right here and i have seen on some of my reviews on the hs70 uh, pros uh, there some people did say that their headsets broke there so if you have these do just keep that in mind don't go too crazy with them because it might potentially a break there but it doesn't happen too often luckily now you also do have a bit of a tilt for the ear cups just can go a bit more so if you do put it on it's just going to fit on your head more comfortably then next up for the ear cups as well it is mostly a plastic and it does have that a nice look to them again the gun uh, the camo color uh, i do personally again like that and just the nice overall look if you do put them on they're not going to look like this crazy gaming headset you can actually wear maybe not these in public the other ones because they're black might actually look still okay camo possibly not anymore <laughs> but anyway so you do have uh, that on the side of the ear cups you do have uh, your volume uh, wheel up here on the left ear cup and then also your mic mute uh, button for the volume wheel you can also just tap it in and it's going to uh, mute the audio as well and then on uh, the right ear cup you do have your uh, your haptics amount your haptics gain amount which you can adjust to to how much you actually want you want to vibrate your ears off or if you just want a tiny bit so that is for that now as for the ear cups uh, padding so these are again a memory of foam just like we saw on the other headsets and they are a pretty soft to the touch but just like the other ones i feel that they are a bit too thin some extra padding would have been a nice just a half a centimeter or so extra i think would have been a great because also on the inside there's only a thin little cloth layer against the driver wall so for me personally because my ears do curve a bit more when i do put them on uh, my ears do scratch against the inside of the driver wall and it can get annoying after a couple of minutes of a gaming now it's not bad but for me personally it's not the most comfortable that's why i actually enjoy the uh, the voids more than the hs 70s uh, and then also these so it's just going to depend up to your ears if you don't have as curvy ears as me then it shouldn't really be a problem and a lot of people do love these so they should be fine for for most people now a potential solution for that is just to add a tiny bit of extra foam padding against the driver wall that we have seen on some of the other headsets uh, i think that would actually work really well and that's again just the only issue that i actually have with the hs range otherwise they're just great overall then next up let's quickly take a look at the microphone so you again pretty much get the exact same mic that you get on the hs60 pros and then also the hs70 pros which is the their detachable bendable mic which is pretty uh, nice and we'll also get the pop filter here at the front now sound quality wise they're pretty uh, decent now they do have a bit more of a nasally sound we did do a full comparison between uh, the hs70 pros the void elites and the virtuoso se's for the mic comparison so if you want to see that just leave the link down below but they're actually pretty good you can possibly stream with them if you're a bit more casual you'll most likely want to go for something like the wave 3 from Elgato if you want to go a bit more professional which we're going to take a look at later but it's good enough um, it's sharp you'll be able to hear everything and it's just a decent mic overall so not too many complaints really again for the price on the other headsets now that I think about it on this headset it's possibly a bit lacking so yeah but it's it's, it's what it is so can you pick up the haptics vibration through the mic actually i haven't tested that let's we try it out let's get a song 
Alright. A super bass heavy song, volume max, vibration max. Now, I, we haven't tested it yet, so you guys are going to hear if it actually picks up. Alright, so this is the first time trying it out, and we haven't listened to it back yet, so you guys will be will hear if it actually makes a difference. Pretty bass heavy. You can actually see that it vibrates. <laughs> Alright, this is a bit overkill. <laughs> I can... I think so. Put it down on the table. You can actually see it vibrates. Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> actually vibrating on the on the desk. So this again is on full blast. I would also again halfway or around 30% and that's perfect. So yeah, first time trying it out. <laughs> but anyway, let's quickly move on towards the sound quality and then now just like most of the other H C M D ranges again, you do get the newer uh, 50 millimeter drivers that actually sound are pretty good. I am glad Corsair added the new ones in compared to the normal HS60s and so on. So you do get very clear highs and also a full mids, but then most importantly for these again is the bass. So then uh, you do get a, a decent amount of bass but because of that haptic feedback, you actually feel the bass, like I mentioned in the beginning, where the headset actually vibrates in a side. You have a little motor. I think Corsair has a nice little video showcasing how that works. I'll just play it for you guys as well. Uh, it actually looks really cool and you can feel the bass. Now again, you do have the, uh, the wheel here on the side, depending on how much you actually uh, want. If you want more, you can just boost it all the way and your entire head will just vibrate. It kind of gets a bit too much, to be honest, but I did find that around like 30% to around like 50%, that's like the sweet spot. Uh, if you want to listen to a uh, music, you can still uh, hear, the, uh, the. you can feel that uh, bass is actually pretty good. Now. I'm not usually too crazy about a bass. I want a bit more a neutral, but I know a lot of people do prefer more bass than just like more of a, a neutral sound. So for them, that's going to work very, very nice. And also for movies, if you do watch like a action movie where it's like a ton of explosions and stuff, it actually picks that up quite well. But most importantly, it's going towards the gaming side. So for gaming, if you play like battlefield of you playing like a big explosion game i just I feel all of that vibration of explosions and what's also really cool is that you can actually feel the direction so if there's an explosion let's say on your right side then the right head uh, ear cup is actually going to vibrate uh, more than the left one and vice versa as well so you can actually depending on where the explosion is you can actually just feel it. It's so much more immersive. Um, now, it's also if there's too much highs, then it's not going to pick that up as well. So there needs to be a base. The haptics works on the lower in frequency. So if you're just I don't know, um, playing Sims. You're not really going to notice that. Uh, but let's say if you're going into a, a racing game with there's like V8s and or v V12s and so on, you actually hear that vibration of the engines in uh, the headset and that's uh, so cool. Um, I know Ron plays a lot of F1 2020 and I'm not exactly sure how much that'll actually pick up. We haven't tried that yet, uh, but because of F1 cars, it's a bit more higher pitch than like rumbling like heavy engine so uh, we'll, we'll test it out and maybe just let you guys know but yeah it's actually pretty cool if you do play like a more uh, american muscle car it's actually pretty fun but yeah that's pretty much it again mostly overall it's the exact same headset as the hs 60 pros and some of the other hs uh, pro ranges it's just that haptics that corsair added which is for me personally way too expensive i wouldn't personally buy this headset just for the haptics but i think that this is corsair's first headset with it 
and it's just a, a, a step into actually adding it to some of their headsets. And of course, anything new is going to be expensive. So they put it on a more of an entry level headset and made it more of a, a higher end, a price entry level headset. So uh, I'll, we'll see what they actually do in the future. But for me personally, I would love to see this in some of their other headsets. Let's say uh, for me personally, again, I like the Avoid Elite. If they could add that into that, I think that'll be pretty cool. Uh, or maybe like the Virtuosos. <laughs> possibly but it's just a cool addition that they can add towards newer headsets because again most headsets are just kind of a bit boring everything is the same audio quality only gets so far we need something a bit new and i think haptics is that new feature that we're going to see in a more and more headsets i hope that's my, my hope but it's also just going to depend on the price because if it's going to be two times more expensive than the standard version, then it's not really gonna get the adoption it really needs to make it worth it. But again, everything in the beginning is expensive and later on it'll get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper where we're gonna get that in every headset. And now a lot of people is of course going to say, I don't need it, I'm not gonna play with that. And true, you don't, but having that option is just the nicest thing. Uh, again, like I had the uh razor and nari ultimates right here and they also have the uh, more their own version of haptics and i also don't use it that much because i also don't play that much games i actually forget it a lot of times but when i do use it it's actually pretty uh, nice and i would again love to just see it on more and more headsets so yeah that's pretty much it uh not recommending these as easily as just an or the hjs 60 pros but if you want to have your first experience with haptics then this is definitely an option that you can go for all the same features as the previous but now with haptics at double the price so if you guys enjoyed this review please like share subscribe and comment like always i will leave links in the video description so if you guys want to get it for yourself check that out also a big thanks to corsair for sending these over for a review and if you guys enjoy this review please like share subscribe and comment like always and i'll check all of you next time cheers guys